Consciousness matters to us. Arguably, it matters more than anything. Take away the magic of sensations, the magic we create, and we'd be smaller creatures living in a duller world. Yet, consciousness is still a scientific mystery. Does it mean there are dimensions to the universe that science doesn't understand? Or could it all be an illusion? We revel in sensations. Colors, sounds, tastes can seem unspeakably wonderful. But what's really going on? Inside my head, my brain is tracking the stimuli that reach my body surface. This activity of my brain is a purely physical process, but my experience of it seems anything but purely physical. And that's the problem. Let's take the case of pain. Suppose I were to prick my thumb. My brain would respond to signals with an internalized hurt response, what scientists call the neural correlate of pain. From an objective point of view, this paining is nothing more than the activity of nerve cells. But from my inside subjective point of view, well, it seems to be nothing less than conscious pain. How can this possibly work? How can there be physical matter on one side of the equation and non-physical consciousness on the other? The explanatory gap, as it's been called, drives philosophers crazy. In fact, there are a good many who would say that the physical brain is just the wrong kind of thing to give rise to consciousness. You might as well suggest it's been said that numbers emerge from biscuits or ethics from rhubarb. Now, I have to agree that when they put it like that, the skeptics may be right. You can't get numbers from biscuits, and you really can't get pain from nerve cells. But here's the thing. Who said you can? Who said you get pain from anything? What if the pain I experience doesn't really exist at all? Let's reconsider. When I prick my thumb, my brain does something physical in response. It creates the neural correlate. When I observe this neural activity from the inside, it appears to me, in the theater of my mind, that I'm in the presence of a pain sensation. But that's just it, appears to me as pain. So what's really at issue is not the reality of pain, but the appearance of it. And the question should be not how can my brain give birth to pain as such, but how can it give birth to something so remarkable, so tricky perhaps, that it looks to me like pain? That's why I think Richard Gregory's Real Impossible Triangle provides such a useful analogy. Note we don't have to explain the existence of the impossible triangle we only have to explain the existence of something that looks like an impossible triangle. Now, with consciousness, I admit, we're not nearly there yet. We don't know what the actual illusion-generating mechanism is. But I'm confident that neuroscientists armed with the right questions will soon be closing in. Even so, there must be limits to what a neuroscientific explanation can tell us about the origins of consciousness. Though it may explain the how, it could never explain the why. And of course, an evolutionary psychologist like me can't leave it there. Given that consciousness has evolved by natural selection, we have to ask what the evolutionary advantage is. 
Richard Gregory invented this object precisely so as to amaze us. Why ever should nature have designed us to amaze ourselves? Well, there's an unexpected answer, but it's the answer that as a scientist I'd put my money on. If we want to learn how these remarkable experiences contribute to biological survival, we need to look at the lives of conscious creatures in their natural environment. And for humans, that means especially the world of other people. When we survey the social scene, I think the evidence is clear. The chief benefit of being conscious lies in the way it changes people's psychological profile. Consciousness feeds our self-worth, our joy in life, our fear of death, and especially it increases our respect for the other conscious beings we live alongside. By placing each one of us at the center of a mystery, consciousness encourages us to think of ourselves and others as spiritual beings and of the world about us as an enchanted place. The philosopher Descartes famously said, I think, therefore I am. But the consciousness that has evolved around the magic of sensations is deeper and more generous than this. I feel, therefore I am. Therefore you feel and you are too. If you want to post your questions in the comments section below, please do that and we'll come back and try and provide some answers in a follow-up video in a few months' time.